Hello, welcome back to Talk Time. And today I have a special guest. This is Pastor Nick Reynolds. Hello, Nick. What's up? <laughs> I'm so excited to have this brother in the house tonight. He is so incredibly awesome, and I, I've learned to pretty much call him and his beautiful wife and baby family because they are connected to our family in such a special way. Pastor Nick is uh, the youth leader at Faith Community for a few more days, right? Yeah, about a month. <laughs> uh, him and his wonderful family are moving soon mm -hmm. to Georgia. Oh man, community is going to be devastated, you know that, right? <laughs> and uh, he also does some other things too. He also is one of the leaders at Peak. I know a lot of parents know all about Peak. And it's awesome to have this man of God watching over our kids, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, feel free to let me know, what, what are some other things that you've got going on in the community? Uh, it's really hard to, <laughs> I really don't know. I think for the most part, that's it. Just uh, I'm a leader at church and I'm a leader at my job and pretty much wherever I can lead, that's where I step in. Mm, amen. And you also a husband and a daddy. Yep. All, yep. All, all that's a lot. That all plays a part too. Yeah. Beautiful <laughs> wife, beautiful little boy and a little girl on the way. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, I've met Nick through my kids. My kids attend his youth group on Friday nights and um, they just grew to have this wonderful relationship. And I didn't even, I, I fell in love with him and his wife before I even really got to know them. My daughter used to come to me and be like, Mom, Pastor Nick just texted me and said, I'm praying for you for your exams <laughs> this morning. I mean, before she goes to school. That's an awesome man of God to do those kinds of things. I just, and, and there's many other things that he's done to touch my heart to where I'm just sitting thanking God that he has placed you in silver in my kids' life. I'm telling you, you, you guys truly are a blessing. No, and you. Georgia, look out for this man. <laughs> he's powerful and he, he's coming. <laughs> and you're, you're going to bless them too. Also, I also want to let everybody know that Nick created the Talk Time logo. Talk Time with Tania, he did this. And uh, I thank you so much um, for blessing me with your work <laughs> and sharing your gift with me. And he, let me just tell you real quick, I, I really didn't realize how important logos were to a company or a ministry. And he, he really let me know that people will refer to you as your, your logo, so to speak. Um, let me give you an example, McDonald's. Everybody know the arches, right? You, it, as soon as you see mm -hmm. that, you instantly think of McDonald's. And that's kind of like with, with your, your personal logo. As soon as they see this, they, they'll think of you. And it has significance to it. Now, Nick not only leads, but he also is an artist. And I think you will see today how his art and the, and the gift that he has is significant as well. I can't wait for them to see your stuff. <laughs> But Nick, tell us, did you start drawing and painting as a child? Uh, I, I wasn't painting. I actually didn't know I could paint until college. Uh, as far as drawing, um, I remember sitting on the floor of my grandmother's house and just drawing little stick figures and stuff, and then it just kind of grew from there. Mm -hmm. And my dad would get on the floor with me, and he would show me how to draw because he was pretty good at that oh. too. Yeah, and um, it, it got to the point where uh, in elementary school. Um, during conferences, the only class that I would get a good report in was art class. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember um, sitting there and the teacher pulled my mom to the side. She said, this is what my students are working on. And then she grabbed mine from out of this pile. And she said, this is what your son is doing. Mm -hmm. She said, I highly advise that you get him put into an art school. Wow. Yeah, but that never happened. So yeah, I just kind of just <laughs> learned on my own because art school costs money and we ain't had a... I understand. <laughs> I understand. That's okay. God gonna still take it and use it for something mm. awesome. Which, again, um, how has God been using that gift along your journey? As far as uh, just drawing? Mm -hmm. um, honestly, the best way he uses it is that it relaxes me. Mm. So like just, um, like some, some days on my Sabbath, like I'll just, I'll paint mm. or I'll just draw. Or honestly, if I'm in the middle of a meeting, I hate meetings. So like, uh, I'm just, I can't sit still. So if you ever catch me in a meeting, you'll see that I'm drawing the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'll draw what the person is saying and that helps me remember. So mm. I'm a very visual person and honestly, pictures and drawing is how I learn. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like, if you try to tell me how to do something, it might not work. But if you show me, I'll learn. Mm. That's awesome. 
Well, um, I've seen some things that you posted on Facebook, um, all the different um, drawings. and Well, actually, I think they are just drawings. I think or what you're going to show us today is paintings, so, though, right? No, that's... Um it's that's graphic art. So oh. pretty much the combination of drawing School and school me because yeah. I don't know the difference between. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not painting. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to crank them out as fast as if it was print mm. painting. Um, I kind of keep painting to myself. Uh, whatever I paint, I usually I don't really sell that. Oh. Yeah, it's like painting is more so personal. Mm. Um, but the graphic art, I use like products like Adobe Illustrator and uh, Photoshop and InDesign, and I pretty much I take my drawings and sometimes I actually just create it right on the computer using. A, um, a pen tool by uh, Wacom um, and pretty much I could, whatever I draw on this pad it'll go on the computer so oh. it's using different mediums um, going from paint brushes to digital pens and it's all the same thing if you know what you're doing wow yeah, yeah I, I didn't know that there was all that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah that's fantastic well, let's get to the nitty gritty. I, I, Nick has brought some of his art with him today, and you're going to be blown away by the things that this young man can do. I see you post all the time the different things that you've created. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Look, I try not to be too uh, creepy and love every single one of them, but hey, I can't help welcome. it. You're more than welcome. <laughs> well, let's take a look. Let's grab some things that you brought for us today, and please explain... Um, how did you come up with the the scripture and the art? Um, well, it, it actually all started off uh, with, uh, it wasn't this one. There was another lion. It, it, it actually sold out, so I don't, um, I don't reprint them. I only print so many of them, then I sell those, and then oh. pretty much uh, once that month is over with, I don't bring those items back. Maybe oh. for like another six months or a year, depending on how I feel. I haven't really established how long I'm... Uh, holding those back, but it was the picture of a lion um, of the story of Benaiah. Oh, uh, well, no, it's not this one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's the story of Benaiah, and it says... Uh, Benaiah is his beautiful son, by the way. Yeah, Benaiah is my son. So I actually, ever since he was born, I had this image in my head of what I wanted to make for him so that he would know who he is. And we try to give our children names that mean something mm -hmm. and that when they grow up, they can step into the destiny of that name. And Benaiah was a, um, he was a valiant warrior who once chased a lion into a pit on a snowy day and he killed it. Mm -hmm. uh, like a chapter later, it says, and King David hired him into his bodyguard. And the moral of that and what I want my son to take from that as he grows up is that sometimes opportunities come disguised as lions mm -hmm. and you have to uh, slay the lion and seize the opportunity. So um, in that picture, you'll see Benaiah is standing confidently while a lion is running away. And some people run away from the lion, so we run away mm -hmm. from opportunities. So that's really how it all started. And then from there, I just began to take silhouettes and build stories inside of them. Wow, look, I'm like, I'm about to shout amen in a minute because uh, that's powerful. And I, I, I'm just blessed. I, honestly, I'm going to be real with you. And don't y'all judge me. But I never even knew Benaiah was in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know until you named your son that. Yeah. And then I found out. And, you know, then I wanted mm -hmm. to know more. And oh, per that's beautiful. Yeah, he was one of King David's great 30. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he has, oh, he's a small see? little cameo in the Bible. But. Do you see why I love him? <laughs> Okay, you can, I'll let um, you explain this one. This one is uh, Judah, obviously, uh, the Lion of Judah. It's where um, Jesus, uh, he, 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 Jesus is in the lineage of uh, King David and his father in the tribe of Judah, which is why he's called the Lion of Judah. But yeah. in this uh, picture, um, you'll see the story is that Jesus is riding into Jerusalem. And then in the background, he's actually going up the mountain, carrying the cross. And then up top, he's actually already been crucified. And all of this is in the silhouette of a lion. Oh, wow. Look, I didn't even, when I looked at it earlier, I didn't even realize. Yeah, so it, it, it's wow. bittersweet because he's being celebrated here, but then he's being crucified there. Mm. So it just tells the story of him going through the process. Awesome. Oh, I love it. I love the story behind it, too. I'll give that to you. And this one is named Transformation. Yeah, Transformation. This is actually part of a four-part series. Um, it's... Uh, Confirmation, preparation, transformation, and destination. Um, this is the third part, and this whole series is uh, the series is called David, and it's um, it's the process of David from him becoming a shepherd to a king, and, he, and the 
first part of confirmation he was already a king to begin with mm -hmm. and the story behind it is just pretty much how do you react when your um, responsibilities are subordinate to your calling mm -hmm. and so here in transformation um, the, the number in the Bible the number 40 in the Bible represents transformation and for 40 days uh, Goliath stood in the valley of Ella and he taunted Israel mm -hmm. while meanwhile while David was in the field tending to his responsibilities that was subordinate to his calling mm -hmm. so for 40 days he was being transformed uh, fighting off lions and bears and then when it got to Goliath, he was already who he needed to be to conquer that giant. Yes. So a lot of us have a lot of different giants that we need to conquer, but first we need to be transformed. We have to go through the preparation and we have to understand that we already heard God. And your greatest weapon isn't the sword. His greatest weapon wasn't the sword or the slingshot. His greatest weapon was his calling. Mm. So I imagine him um, going out into the Valley of Ella and saying, my purpose is too great. Mm. So if your purpose is too great, then whatever you go against can't conquer you. Mm. Yeah, so th that's actually one of my favorites too of the series. That is powerful. Yeah, it's a little graphic. You see, uh, I see the head right yeah, there. The little, <laughs> the little 15 year old boy here standing before the giant, but he doesn't see. He doesn't see a problem, he sees an opportunity. Mm. And the opportunity he sees is him already celebrating with the head of the giant in his hand. Come on, that is awesome. Whew. See, y'all didn't know that y'all was going to learn all that today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to look at some simple things. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. This is beautiful. This is quiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quiver. It's uh, one of my favorite ones. Um, and this one has to do with uh, parenthood. Uh, the Bible says the children are like an arrow in the quiver of their parents. Mm. So uh, when you think about that, the, the, um, the substance in that, it, it's, so, it's so powerful because with an arrow, you put it on the, um, the bow and you put it in the right position and you let it fly. But you have to aim it in the right direction. That's so right. that aligns with the verse that says, um, uh, like, raise your children the right, right way so that they don't um, fall, so that they don't go the wrong direction. Right. Um, so as you can see, this guy, he's pointing in a certain direction, but when it comes to parenting, which I'm not trying to coach anybody about parenting because I only have a 10 month year old son, but I understand that at some point I can't be, I can't hover over my son mm -hmm. and I have to raise him to a certain point and then just let him live his life and I just hope that everything that I taught him will guide, guide him through life in the same way that the feathers guide the arrow. Mm. Hey man, that, that's the desire for every parent is to want to make sure we're leading and guiding them in the ways of Jesus. and. Uh, all right, don't get me started. This is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. And I picked this one to show too, because I, I want to know the, the significance of. Uh, this was called The Gift. Um, and uh, what is it, Psalms? Uh, 127.3 and it says the children are a gift from the Lord. What I wanted to do inside of this one is just show that like um, you know from the outside we just see a pregnant woman you know and then like we know that there's a baby inside of there but um, inside of the silhouette of a pregnant woman I wanted to tell a story mm -hmm. and as she's looking down at her stomach and she, she sees what the child will become mm -hmm. and that's what we have to look at is that when you look at a woman and you see the child within a womb it, it's you you have to wonder like that, that, that child is made to become something like um i once asked someone like what's your definition of creativity and their response was oh um i said what's the first thing you think about when i say creativity and they said oh pencils painting and drawing and i said okay i said that, that that's that's being an artist uh, because you got to understand creativity everyone in this world is creative and all creativity is when you get to the root of its meaning it's problem solving so you think about it, it says God created, oh, it says um, uh, in the beginning the world was formless and void and then God created light. Mm -hmm. You know, he looked at Adam and he said uh, man should not be alone and then he created Eve. And so all throughout the Bible, whenever there was a problem, God created. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a problem had just come, but God created a man that's 40 years old or 100 years old to solve that problem. So he knew about the problem before the problem even happened. Mm -hmm. So the point that I want to make is that the child inside of her womb is created to solve, solve a problem. He's created for a reason. Everyone has purpose. Everyone has a destiny. Everyone has something inside of them. And simply, she's just waiting for him to become. Mm. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that is powerful and beautiful. Uh, my heart is just like, <laughs> wow. You're, you're blowing me away, man, with how you are so 
I, I believe that these are prophetic, um, prophetic art. Mm -hmm. You know, th this is just not something that you felt like doing. This is truly something that God has led you to do. And I'm just, I cannot wait to see more <laughs> and of more of what God will do with you with this. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you have just taught us so much in just this few minutes through your work. I mean, yeah. he didn't even have to sweat and spit and jump <laughs> around the church with a microphone. He, he simply, he, he just preached to us uh, and taught us, I should say. He just taught us some things and uh, how powerful. I, I'm just like, I'm excited. I'm trying to maintain and be professional here, but uh, such a wise young man uh, of God. And this is why I'm so blessed to have him in my girls' life. You want somebody like this in your kids' life, honestly. Now, Nick, your things are for sale, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, we don't have to get into prices or anything right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if people are wanting to contact you, uh, can they make requests? They can, um, and people have made requests until I gave them the price. <laughs> okay. uh, what people have to understand is creativity takes time, and like yeah. you can't, you can't rush it. If you rush it, then you're going to get exactly mm -hmm. that. You know, you're going to get rushed work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can have uh, custom pieces. I've had people request it and I had people purchase it. Mm -hmm. um, that you don't want to get into price, do you? I mean, I could start spinning up the price, but I feel like it's more so about the product. Yeah. And I'll actually, before we get to that point, um, you said the prophetic pieces. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that came to mind was how um, in the Old Testament, you saw that when whenever they encounter God at a certain place um, or they heard his voice, especially if we go to Abraham, like he he heard God's voice and then he would grab stones and he would build an altar. Mm -hmm. And then when he would always come back to that altar, he, he would just come back to that altar and he would it would bring to remembrance what God said mm -hmm. at that moment and that's what these are this is our work but th that's how I like to view these more so uh, it's it's an altar mm -hmm. it, it's what you can go back and you can look at and remember that God said because one of the the things that the enemy says when God speaks to you the first thing he says is did God really say we see that in the Garden of Eden when um, Eve was standing by the tree of uh, good and evil and the first thing Satan said was did God really say mm -hmm. now if she had that altar Mm -hmm. It reminded her that God actually said that. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the gift or it's transformation, um, you're going back to a point where, you know, this is a promise from God that you could stand on. So it, I, it is prophetic in a way. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and people are going to, like, recognize that right away. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this dude has got uh, not only just a gift with, you know, putting a pen or, or your graphics or, you know, paint or whatever to, mm -hmm. to a paper. But no, you have a gift to hear from the Lord mm -hmm. and to express that through your art. So. Yeah. And it is a, it's an interesting process. There, there are times where God would just drop an idea on me and I'll just fly with it. But then there are times where the scripture is so complex. Mm -hmm. um, like um, it was John 1.1. 1, 1. It's such a complex um Co complex scripture is uh, in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God and then when you think about that like he's, he's describing the virgin birth from heaven's perspective mm -hmm. so how do you illustrate something like that so um, it's actually one of the most simple um, simple designs that I've made but it took me the longest to make because I and I literally had to keep repeating the verse over and over and over as I clicked and clicked and stretched and drew and just trying to get okay God like how can I illustrate this in a way that people will know you mm. you know so how, how do you illustrate heaven's perspective I don't know like I, I haven't seen it so you know so it's it's really it's really interesting it, it's a blessing really it's yeah. to be able to have that type of sight <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Don't you just want to sit down and have coffee for three hours with this man? I'm, I'm telling you, he can teach you a lot. And he can, look, I, look. Revelation was just like, whoa. <laughs> but now, Nick, um, tell me, how can people contact you if they're wanting a painting or wanting to request or just want to simply talk with you? How, how can people get in, in touch with you? Uh, I mean, I would say through Facebook or through Etsy. Um, on Facebook, the page is NDR Creative. Um, I do a fairly good job at responding to uh, messages. Or if you go to Etsy and just type in NDR Creative, that's where the latest art is. On Facebook, you'll see all the different um, designs, but on Etsy, you'll see the latest one. The uh, ones from the previous month will not be posted, like I said before. Um, like for this month, uh, it was actually, it would be the um, series David. 
So this, the ones that we just showed you as far as Judah and the one I talked about before, Beniah, those are long gone. Oh. Um, but there are some that I still have left over. Like I have, that's the last one of the gift mm -hmm. that I have. So if anyone wants to purchase that, I'll, I'll sell it to them. Um, but yeah, Etsy is where you can buy the latest work. Uh, Facebook is where you can see all of the work. And you message me and chances are I will respond. Okay. Is there an email address too? Uh, NDR, NDR Creative. Oh, okay. Yep, NDR Creative at gmail.com. Awesome. We'll make sure that everyone gets that at the end of this this little show. Wow, Nick, you have blown me away. Here I am thinking, oh, I'm going to have my brother Nick on, and we're going to talk about how beautiful his art is, but you just blessed my spirit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, so no problem. I appreciate you having me. Time. <laughs> oh, and blessings to you and your beautiful family in this new season of life. In oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I appreciate that a lot. Well, I love y'all. Thank you for watching Talk Time. That's all we have for today. Blessings.